$100, one very hungry man at the largest Christmas market in Tokyo. Let's go! Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Okay, now that looks like a banger. WTF. That is the most beautiful cup of hot chocolate. This is by far the best bite we've had tonight. Oh, gozaimasu. She make it wobble wobble. She make it jiggy jiggy. Merry Christmas. Pow. Konnichiwa and ho 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 from Tokyo, Japan. What up everybody? Hope you're feeling good, feeling great. We are on our way to the biggest Christmas market in Tokyo. Christmas market 2023. It's going down with just a few days before Christmas. We got to get in some traditional Christmas treats in our stomach and see how Japan spins a traditional European Christmas market. Cannot wait. We're going to go in. We're going to eat as much foods as we can. As always, I'm going to tell you the price of each individual dish and I rate every single food one to five rocket ships. One being the worst and five being the best. This isn't like those other food shows where they're going to say like, ah, everything's the best thing, everything's good. Only real, authentic, honest reviews. Let's not wait another single second. Let's set it off. A ticket to enter the market was just about $7.25. This video is being filmed on a Thursday at about five o'clock. When you purchase your ticket, you have to pick what time you're gonna show up because I've heard it can get insanely busy here. I'm talking like an hour wait uh, just to get one single food uh, in these lines. So it is open during the day, but I want to be here at night. I want to see this lit up, you dig? You can't go to a Christmas market during the day. The gifts have already already arrived uh, because I bought the ticket online. Uh, they gave me a little Christmas mug here to commemorate it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is worth $7 by itself besides the cost of admission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely gonna put some hot cocoa in this when I get back to the States. Skirt, hold up. Before we take these first Christmas bites, I wanna give a shout out and a major thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Skip Lag. I have been professionally traveling for over five years now, and I use Skip Lag to exclusively book cheap flights all across the globe. Check out the link below, see it for yourself. You can set up price alerts to find out when certain routes you wanna take go up in price or go down in price, and then you can actually look at the historical data of those flight prices to make informed decisions on when it's the best time for you to book your next flight and hey because Christmas is well it's like a day away right this would be the perfect time to hop on skip lag get yourself a trip treat yourself get your significant other a plane ticket up and out of wherever you're at now major shout out to skip lag again click the link below now let's get back to the Christmas snacking you're definitely gonna need Google Translate if you come here it looks like a lot of the food trucks the vendors only have menus in Japanese no big deal uh, used Google Translate on this they got like turkey legs they got some sort of sausages a few drinks but this thing right here this looks the most appealing this is the Su Bakuro's Maple Plenty 10 brulee bomb oh it's definitely some sort of creme brulee action I see that he's got the blowtorch there Oh, this looks insane. Arigatou gozaimasu. Wow. Oh, stickers? Stickers. Yeah, sure. Uh, this this guy. Yeah, sure. Arigatou gozaimasu. Who is this character? Let me know in the comments below who the heck Subakaru is, because I got no idea. This smells like a dream come true. Getting major like French toast elements to it. It said it had like maple or something in it. Ooh, can't wait. All right, straight off the rib. Here we go. It's got almost like, it looks like a bun cake, you dig? Ooh, okay. The fork's sliding right through. I think this is gonna be mega, mega moist. It almost looks like a piece of cake. Pow. Mmm. That's what's up. It's like a super moist, super sweet, spongy cake. You can taste like the crunchiness of the, like the creme brulee sugar on top that was blowtorch. It uh, really adds a nice like crunchy element to the softness of the cake. That maple flavor, very, very strong. The creme brulee flavor is intoxicating. This was 700 Japanese yen or just about $4.40 USD. It tastes like Christmas. It tastes like the outdoors. If you can't tell, it's kind of chilly out here. It's the thing that's going to warm you up to the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll definitely get this again. Y'all, this maple creme brulee cakey thing. Y'all, it's a 3.9 rocket ship snack. Mega, mega good. Whoops. First Christmas bite completed, and if that's an indication of what's to come, oh, it's gonna be a tasty and delicious night, and oof, I'm gonna be full. I'm gonna be the size of Santa Claus once we get done with this, you dig? Okay, we're going down the list, one by one by one. This place is called Xmas Cotton Candy. Looks like they've got some waffles, and it looks like they've got some crazy drinks that you can maybe put in the complimentary mug we got. Who knows? 
I don't know about y'all, but that waffle, that waffle is calling my name. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Uh, one strawberry waffle? Okay. Yes. And it is strawberry waffle time. Oh, it's good. It almost looks like they put like little pieces of freeze dry. Waffle on there. What? Are you kidding me? This was 600 Japanese yen. Just about $4.10. Konnichiwa. We got some new friends. Yay. Yay. <laughs> What's your name? Hey guys, oh. my name is Demo. Demo, nice to meet you. And your name? Me. Me. Oh, I think she's got some uh, Christmas yeah. treats in her mouth, actually. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. They go, YouTuber? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ah! Okay, y'all. All right, we got the strawberry waffle, and uh, it's almost 6 o'clock now. This place is starting to fill up. I'm very lucky that I've been able to find, like, two places to sit uh, while I've been here. We're gonna choose the part that's like super covered in like this cream cheese sauce. At least I think it looks like a cream cheese sauce. Oh, look at that. There's drip drop dripping on there. Pow. Mmm. Mmm. It looks small. That is a dense waffle. Wow. Oh my god. Okay, okay. The waffle, it's it's not as like as soft and as fluffy as I would like it. It's definitely like on the crunchier side. I can't quite describe it. Definitely not a Belgian waffle. I do really like the cream. The cream is really sweet. It's got a nice consistency to it. But these like freeze-dried strawberries or strawberry pieces, whatever they use in here, I'm kind of getting like a little artificial type of a strawberry flavor from it. And I'm just not loving it that much. I can't, I can't put my finger on it, but something about this just tastes very like processed <laughs> and not natural. I'm not sure I would recommend this one and I don't think I would get it again. Oh, it does kind of look like a Christmas tree when you look at it like that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a 2.8. My new friends over here are giggling so hard. You guys, you guys are so, so cute, so adorable. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a 2.9 rocket ship Christmas snack. Can't say I'd get it again. Yo, check out this gigantic menu. Pretzels, roast beef, beer steamed mussels, what? Edamame? What is going on here? You've got like every clam chowder? Every culture from around the world represented here for, for Christmas apparently in Tokyo. But I'm craving something very traditional, something very German. And I think we're gonna get some assorted sausages. That sounds good to me. That pretzel does look tempting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get a pretzel and let's get some sausages. Major tip if you're coming to the Tokyo Christmas market, uh, make sure you have a mix of both cash and credit card. It seems that some places only take cash, uh, but the first two places I went to took credit card or cash. Maybe some places will only take credit card. We'll see, but just for y'all information, cash and credit card just to be safe. Konnichiwa. One pretzel and uh, two sausage. Two sausage. Two sausage means this one. Uh, assorted, right? Yeah, yeah. Which pretzel? Then one or cheese one? Oh, cheese. We gotta do cheese. We gotta do a cheese pretzel. Merry Christmas! Hey! Feeling the love out here, y'all. And here is what we are working with. This was 1,500 Japanese yen. Just about $10. Woo! That's expensive, y'all. But here we go. It looks like we've uh, they've given us some sort of mustard with the sausages. Who knows what kind of sausages uh, these are. We're gonna go ahead and just dip this one right in. And pow. Mmm. Mmm-hmm, mmm-hmm. Really good flavor. The mustard's nice. Not quite that super kick yourself in the tongue um, spicy mustard that I'm used to from Germany. The sausage is served nice and hot. This is some sort of a, a worst. Who knows what kind of uh, sausages here. Maybe I should have asked what kind of sausages they are. Let's go here and try the other one. Pal. Mmm. Okay, there's also like a little sweet element to the mustard as well. I've never been to a European Christmas market, so I can't compare, but I'm not loving the flavor here. They're like, okay, we need a lot more mustard. They did not give us enough mustard. We need like three more spoonfuls of mustard on here, you dig? Yeah, for the, the price, it's pretty expensive for some sausages that are just okay. I'm not really loving the flavor of the sausages. They're just missing something as pretty far away from a European sausage as you can get. So let's see if uh, Mr. Pretzel here uh, can redeem the sausages. It looks like they've actually sprinkled on the cheese. It almost looks like it's, can you guys see that? Yeah, it's like powdered cheese almost and then 
What the heck are those things hanging off the end there? Huh? I don't know. How? Mmm. Okay. Okay. We got some cheese on the inside. Oh, it's cream cheese. I did not expect that. I was expecting like cheddar cheese or something. Cream cheese. Mmm. Oh. Sad to say, I'm not really digging the pretzel. First off, it's like lukewarm, barely hot. I want a pretzel to be like piping hot, especially if it's stuffed with cheese. I would not have ordered this had I known it was cream cheese. I wanted something savory. I wanted like a cheddar cheese, maybe like a funky cheese on it. This just isn't doing it. The pretzel consistency, it's just not that great. Especially when you're in a country where you can get like a million desserts that are 500 times better than this. Yeah, the cream cheese stuffed pretzel and the sausages, both are just a hard pass for me. Sorry, sorry Craft House, but again, I, I owe it to my audience to give you guys the truth. Y'all, why didn't you tell me I had so much of that waffle uh, in my beard and on my chin. I think I actually got more of the waffle, at least the cream sauce, uh, on my skin than I did in my actual mouth. I'm gonna be shaving and scrumming out strawberry waffle uh, until next Christmas at this stage. Uh, as you can see, the lines are starting to get like out of control here. Um, I, I think we're gonna have some sort of challenge ahead of us here with trying to get uh, some more food items. But here we've got a place called Schwarzbrau, and I think that they've got a variety of Japanese dishes. We're gonna try to get up close here and see what they have. What the heck are these things? They almost look like little potato croquettes or some sort of chicken. Yeah, yeah, I think this is what we need. I was gonna order some chicken because they had buffalo wings or at least buffalo chicken, but then I saw right in the middle there what they said, what is the number one? And it looks like some sort of raclette cheese. At least that's what the translation tells me. It just says raclette over maybe beef or something like that. It looks like some french fries for just about a thousand Japanese yen, which I think is just about seven dollars USD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got to try the number one. Ah, arigato gozaimasu. Wow, straight up off the rip. That didn't take any time. All right, here we go. Yeah, it looks like some sort of roast beef with cheese. A cheese that looks a very different color from the cheese that is on that picture up there. We're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some chopsticks because we are here in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, straight up, in the interest of transparency, I Googled. I reddited, I went on reddit and I was like, uh, Tokyo Christmas markets, which is the best one? And everyone said, well, a lot of the comments said, don't waste your time, the long, the lines are long, uh, the food is terrible, but you know, you never believe what you read on the internet until you go and see it for yourself. Gosh, I don't know guys, I don't wanna judge a uh, cheese or a dish by its cover, but something tells me that that really doesn't look like raclette cheese. That kind of looks like the cheese you would get out of a can or something. But uh, we're gonna try it out. Pow. Mm. Ice cold. WTF. Ice cold. Are you kidding me? It's like they had this in the fridge. Not a good first impression. Okay, the beef itself is actually pretty tender. It's got a nice flavor to it. I thought it might be a little dry just because of the way it looked, but it's pretty juicy. Okay, okay, I'm impressed. The cheese sauce, however, it is, it's not a nacho cheese sauce. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't taste like the raclette you would imagine. How are you gonna serve me cold fries? Why am I eating cold french fries? Why am I paying this amount of money for cold french fries? It doesn't make any sense, guys. I think it's an absolute travesty that this isn't hot. I, I feel like there's gotta be a mistake. There's no way anyone in their right mind is gonna serve cold french fries and cold beef. It's a major miss, not good at all. I'm not gonna say it's terrible, but the fact that they couldn't serve it to me hot, and then they use this like weird processed cheese. Like I would understand if maybe the fries are a little lukewarm, but the fact that the fries and the beef and the cheese are freezing cold, come on, man. Not the quality of food I'm used to here in Japan, y'all. This is a 1.6 rocket ship snack. This is easily the worst thing I've had in Japan so far. And hopefully, please dear Santa, it'll be the worst thing we have at the Christmas market tonight. Hopefully the next bites are gonna get better and better and better. All right, next stop, the Paul Anner. Again, just a gigantic menu. Garlic shrimp, chicken and chips, fish and chips, garlic prawn, everything just all over the place. Not really sticking with the theme of like, Konnichiwa! What's, what's best? What's Favorite? What's good? Best? Best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, it's the best, it's the best. Uh, goulash, soup bread, goulash, and beef tongue. 
Oh, hold up, playa. All right, the order has been placed for the soup cup bread goulash beef tongue. Essentially a beef tongue goulash in a bread bowl. I love a bread bowl so much. The total cost, 1,800 Japanese yen, just about $12 USD. We are blowing through this $100, y'all. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay, now that looks like a banger. Wow, does that look good. That is a, that is a good looking beef bowl, y'all. And you can see that there's actually steam coming off it. It wasn't served ice cold the other place over there. Let's take a look at this. I mean, it looks like a thing of beauty. It looks like we've got some broccoli in there. And then I'm guessing some maybe potatoes too. All right, let's just go ahead and dip in the top of the soup bowl, the bread bowl, uh, into this, this goulash. Pow. Mmm. Sweet, thick, but with a nice savory and salty element. Okay, we have pulled out a massive piece of beef tongue. This is one of the most expensive meals that I've had in Japan so far. Uh, had beef tongue at the Yakanuka and it was really good, but we'll see what it's like here at the Christmas market in the goulash pal. Mmm, uh-huh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That is good. In Espanol and Spanish in Mexico, we call beef tongue la lingua. And this tastes like some really, really good beef tongue. Super tender, incredibly juicy. It does a really great job of absorbing all the goulash that's in there. It is juicy to the max, y'all. Really, really digging it. I feel like $12, it's, it is expensive, but it is a pretty good value because you do get at least three gigantic pieces of beef tongue here. Traditionally, tongue is one of the most expensive cuts of meat that you can get. The goulash is good. The bread bowl is nice. I mean, if we're gonna nitpick, I would like the bread bowl to be just a little bit crispier, crunchier on the outside, but it's doing a good job of like, holding all the goulash in there. I'm gonna give this 2.7 <laughs> rocket ships. So I heard some very nice girls behind me say Serrano ham, and I was like, ooh, okay. Went and checked out the menu here at Flo Hay, or Flo, and they've got a couple different varieties of ham and potatoes. And okay, I think this is where we gotta pull the trigger on our first hot chocolate, because that one has like a pretzel on top. That translates to uh, hot chocolate, hot, hot milk chocolate. So we're gonna pull out our mug, which I'm suddenly realizing is a very tiny mug. Uh, are you allowed to bring your own mug here? Why not? Ooh, okay, that looks really, really nice. Konnichiwa, oh, okay. Konnichiwa! Konnichiwa, how are you? How are you? Uh, one cheddar cheese serrano ham. One? Uh, serrano ham with cheddar? Yes, cheese, cheese serrano. Uh, yes. Best? Is that best? What's best? Why did they go best? Yeah. Sausage. The so oh, we just we had no. sausage already. Uh, okay. We're gonna try something. Uh, you can try. You okay. Can try okay. 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 And then uh, hot chocolate, please. Hot chocolate. Yes. Oh, look at that! That is nice. That is the most beautiful cup of hot chocolate I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and here we go. There it is. The cheddar cheese with the raw ham. Okay. And here we go. This looks good. This looks. Yeah. Yeah. It looks very nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Once I saw that. Had to get it. Okay, and we've got this other huge indoor seating area over here. Did not see this at first. I thought I was gonna have to keep running back around to the other place here. The total cost for the hot chocolate uh, and the serrano ham with the cheese, 2,000 Japanese yen, or just about $14. We are, we took that $100 bill, we're just lighting it on fire, y'all. So here is what we're working with. We've got the serrano ham, and then on the inside, you've got these like mozzarella balls. They almost remind me of like little mozzarella balls you would have with like, a caprese salad or something. All right, here we go. Curious, are these gonna be cold? Because the ham was um, raw, I'm guessing these are gonna be like served chill. Okay, here we go, pow. Mm. That's nice. This would taste amazing with a beer. I can't even describe it, it's very salty. I just, hot chocolate was the wrong move. Like I need a giant stein of beer, like a, a Heineken or something. But this is nice. They put on some like seasoning here which is maybe like a little oregano vibe to it. And I think they've almost sprinkled on some Parmesan as well. I like it. This is a good appetizer. Like you show up to a party or something, you put these out with some little toothpicks in there. The people are gonna be moving and grooving. This, this is tasty. Yeah, this is, this is the kind of food you want to like soak up a little bit of alcohol, you dig? The ham itself, it's got just the right amount of salt to it. The cheese on the inside, it's a very neutral flavor. It pairs so, so well with the saltiness 
of this ham. It is a perfect combination of match made in heaven. The oregano kind of gives it this nice fresh element as well. But the ham, it's so tender. It's, it's just, mm, it is like melt in your mouth. I did not expect to find this kind of ham here uh, in Japan. Very, very impressed. Okay, this is by far the best bite we've had tonight. Simple, delicious, straight to the point. Yo, this is a 4.3 rocket ship snack. I would crush this again and again and again. Let's try the milk hot chocolate with the pretzel, with the marshmallow, and with this like Christmas tree of whipped cream. I don't even like, how am I gonna attack this? Wow. We didn't even try the hot chocolate yet. The whipped cream, so fluffy, so sweet. That ain't Cool Whip, that ain't Ready Whip. That tastes like real deal cream was used to make this whipped cream. Like, whoom, tastes like they've been whipping it for, for the past six years, since last Christmas. So fluffy, so good. And that pretzel, pew, that was a hitter. Very salty, nice crunch to it. Now let's go in for the real sip of the hot chocolate. Pow. I was hoping it would be a little thicker. It's kind of like a watered down hot chocolate. I don't love it. I mean, maybe I was just expecting more. Maybe I was expecting like a really rich, creamy, thick hot chocolate, and it just kind of tastes like powdered hot chocolate mix. It almost tastes like it's mixed with water and not actual milk. I'm gonna give the uh, hot chocolate again. This is a 2.5 rocket chip hot chocolate. It's about as average as it gets, um, sadly would not get it again. The ham, the ham was strong. Let's take a moment to walk around with all this heavy European food uh, digest. And here we are, an up close and personal look at, I don't even know what you call this thing. Someone said it was called like the Christmas pyramid. That is not a pyramid. My grandparents used to have one of these in their house. Of course, not this big. We are now at the Dank House, but I think it's pronounced Danka House. And uh, I think we're gonna get the Hamburg steak because that looked like the best thing on the menu, or at least it looked like something that we haven't had yet here. We've had a lot of sausages. Oh! Everybody's okay. Everybody's okay. Oh, arigatou gozaimasu. Wow, that looks, that's good looking. Oh yes, thank you so much. Okay, so we got a little potato action up in there. And we got the Hamburg steak. Looks like they put on some tomatoes and broccoli and uh, mashed potatoes as well. Arigatou gozaimasu, thank you. It smells good, it smells so, so good. It looks like they've also put some oregano on here as well and this uh, this gravy or sauce whatever, that's a thick, thick sauce, okay. And it's a, it's a pretty good size. Hamburg patty, like it's, yeah, it's big. Pow! Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that, tastes like real German food. That hamburg is nice. So, so juicy, so, so tender. It is like melt in your mouth tender. Fork tender, it's, it's. I mean it is, it is like hamburger, uh, for lack of a better word, but it tastes so nice, especially when you eat it with the mashed potatoes underneath. The texture combination, very good. The neutral element of the potato also pairs really nicely with like the super savory, hearty saltiness of this, uh, Hamburg steak here. I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Now I know the Hamburg steak is very popular in Japan. I actually have not tried one yet, so I can't compare it, but this is pretty good. It's a lot like more mushier than a traditional like hamburger that was cooked on a grill or something. But the consistency, the texture, it's almost like a meatloaf. That was the that was what I was trying to compare it to. It's very meat loafish. The sauce, whatever they've used, it does kind of remind me of that goulash sauce, but it's like a very thick, savory sauce with some elements of sweetness in there. Yeah, yeah, this is what we call stick to your ribs food because once you eat it, it sticks to your ribs. And y'all, I'm starting to get the meat sweat. I really, really like this. I definitely would get it again. This is a 4.1 rocket ship Christmas market Hamburg steak. We gotta run it back because there, I don't know if you can see it, but there is the actual raclette. I'm seeing that actual real raclette cheese is being used here. And we're gonna get this thing, which looks like baguette with the raclette with a little sausage in the middle. This is at the cheese and Swiss house. I was gonna say it looks Swiss inspired because you got this Swiss crossbread here. Swiss crossbread, I've never had that. We might as well get that, huh? And they got something called Alpine macaroni too. Yeah, 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 let's get that. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, it's hollow in the middle. And then all the smell coming off this raclette cheese. It smells real good. Oh, wow, here we go. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, overflowing. Oh, that looks nice. insane. Oh. And now? Oh, 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 the sausage oh, in the slot. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's getting real gooey in there, y'all. Oh. And then, oh, I think those are fried onions. Onions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, with the nope. fried onions. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, I think this is going to be just an absolute no, no, no. banger, y'all. Take a look at this Swiss spread in all its glory. And in keeping in line with uh, the cost of food in Switzerland, this was the most expensive meal spread of the night. Altogether, this was about 3,600 Japanese yen, or just about $25 USD, which puts us at $90 spent in total so we only got a few more yen to spend tonight but let's not waste another single second let's try this swiss cross bun never had a swiss cross bun in my life as you can tell it's got a cross on the swiss cross bun pow mm. well it's a bun it's a very big bun it's a very dense bun it's i thought it would be filled with something it's just a bun. I should have got a giant liter of beer to wash this thing down. It's good as far as a bun goes, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cheat. We're gonna dip it into this macaroni and cheese with these crispy onions here. Because I, I honestly don't know why you would eat the bun by yourself. It's, it's, it's a bun. It's a good bun, but it's a bun. It's, uh, it's got a nice like a buttery element on top to it. It's very moist but it is a bun but now that we've dipped in this raclette cheese whew, look at the steam come off it this isn't like that lukewarm cheese we had earlier pow that was the cheese we were looking for that is the real deal raclette cheese Woo! it's so good it's creamy it's got kind of like a little funkiness that you would expect from like a Swiss cheese? Yes, yes, yes. And the star, the cross bun, whatever, by itself, I mean, it's, it's. I guess it's one of the better buns I've had. So I'll say it's 3.5 uh, rocket ship bun. But once you mix it with the actual um, raclette cheese, which is maybe how you're supposed to do it, it just really, really takes it to the next level. Yo, I'm gonna spin the camera around here. Guys, check out. This macaroni, y'all. What do we got in there? Maybe that's a little like, oh, I think it's a gnocchi. And then I think we've got macaroni noodles. And then, of course, those crispy onions. This one might be a, a, a tongue burner. Pow. Oh my God. I think we saved the best for last, guys. This is a triumph. This is the best thing I've had at the market. This is food number 8910. Who knows? This is bomb.com. It's so creamy. It's so cheesy, it's so delicious. I love that the crispy onions give it this crunchy element too. The texture mix in here, it is out of control. I would eat this every single day. This is, this is bomb.com, y'all. I'm in love, the macaroni itself, cooked to perfection, it's al dente. This is the best thing I had at the Christmas market. I don't think anything else is gonna surpass this. This is unreal, y'all. This is a five, rocket ship Christmas market snack. This is the best thing I ate today. It's one of the best things I ate in Japan. This would make any true Swiss person or any real European very, very proud to have. Oh, she make it wobble wobble. She make it jiggy jiggy. Okay, time for this thing, this, this raclette fondue stuffed bread sausage type of thing. Well, I guess there's nothing more you can do but eat the sausage first to get down to the rest of it. Huh? hot doggy in texture. The sausages that I've had so far, they're, they're just not living up to the sausages uh, that I have in Germany. Maybe it's the curing process or something, but I'm not loving the sausages. This one was okay. Okay, but well, let's eat it all together now. How? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, the combination of this raclette with this baguette, it's an out-of-body experience. I, I really wish that I could take that serrano jamon, that serrano ham, stuff that in here instead of the sausage, and that would be, that'd be a five rocket chip snack, easily. Um, 
the raclette and the bread does a really good job of masking the flavor of the sausage that I don't really dig. I don't hate the flavor of the sausage. The flavor is just there. It's very hard to explain, but I, I would I would not the sausage by itself. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, but the sausage with the bread and with the cheese, it's dang, dang good, y'all. The onions, though, man, the onions just taking it to another level. This is still a four rocket ship Christmas market snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd almost ask them to just give me the cheese and the bread without the sausage. That's how much I love this cheese and how much I love this bread. Okay, get out of here. Absolutely no way. They have lobster for 4,900. I don't even know what that is. That's like $30. We're not getting lobster at the European Christmas market. They also have, what is that? Like a lobster roll? And then, man. Do we get the lobster roll? Do we try the lobster roll at the European Christmas market in Tokyo? That just sounds so wrong. Konnichiwa, konnichiwa, hey! Hey, konnichiwa, konnichiwa. Where are you from? With my new lobster family, United States. United States. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye, thank you so sweet. Yes, thank you. All right, we got the lobster roll. This was, how much was this? 1200 Japanese yen or just about eight dollars so that brings us to 99 dollars which means we got to eat one more thing after this to finally complete our hundred dollar challenge let's go straight in here and see what the heck a lobster roll is like here in Japan okay interesting let's peel it back a little bit wow it looks like we've it smells buttery it smells lobster it looks like a giant piece of lobster on top am I right who in a million years would expect a lobster roll at a Christmas market in Tokyo, Japan. Pow. Mm. I mean, you probably had a feeling it was going to be a mistake. I knew it was probably going to be a mistake, but had to try it for the grammar. Had to try it for uh, YouTube. I was hoping that it would blow me away like the Swiss food did, but oh man, that's a bad lobster roll. Way too fishy, way too seafoody. They used like a ton of butter on it. And so it's almost like a lobster soup. The less I say about it, uh, the better. The bread was just way too soggy. The baguette bread we had with the uh, sausage was a lot better. This was just not good. However, in the United States, uh, Boston, Maine, a lobster roll would cost you like $25. So uh, I guess this is a deal, but yeah, I just, I just don't know. Japan, really not a place known for its lobster as well. Certainly known for its seafood. That's just bad, bad, bad. This might be the worst thing I've had tonight. I'm sorry, those people were so nice too. I don't judge them, it's not, it's, it's not their fault. It's, it's the quality of the lobster. <laughs> look, look at my man over here. Oh! Yeah, that, that describes uh, how I feel about this lobster roll. 1.2 rocket ships, no redeeming qualities. Would never in a million years get it again. We are going to Glock, Luke for the churros. They got strawberry, matcha, chocolate sugar, cinnamon sugar. And I'm like, out of breath, we're eating so much food, guys. Uh, arigato gozaimasu, thank you. All right, that is, that might be the longest churro I've ever seen in my life. Look at the size of this thing. This was 550 Japanese yen, or just about $3.80 USD. Putting our total at somewhere well north of $100 now. But here we go. I'm curious if it's stuffed with chocolate or what, but man, all, all throughout uh, Japan, I noticed people go crazy for the churros. It was the same in Korea. And, well, if you've been to Mexico, you know how they feel about churros in Mexico. Pow. Mmm. Wow. That is like the strawberriest of the berries. A churro that I've ever had. What the heck? Oh my gosh. And there's so much powdered sugar on it. Mega, mega crunchy. I think I probably should have gone with the traditional uh, churro. I don't really like the strawberry and chocolate combination. It's just not for me. The strawberry flavor, it's also just a little like artificial, kind of like we felt like the strawberry was when we first had that waffle at the beginning of the night. Upon further inspection, I don't even think it's a chocolate cream. I think just the inside was like a, a chocolate churro and then they put like the strawberry churro on the outside. I'm just not a big fan. I don't know, the flavors just don't do it for me. I should have tried any other flavor there. That's on me though. It is, it's uh, crispy. It's, uh, it, it is fried to perfection. Like besides the insane amount of sugar they've used, 
it's a good churro, uh, for sure. So yeah, I would say if you really like churros, try it. Just don't get this flavor, because it's like very, very artificial. It's just not for me. This right here, it's a 2.3 rocket ship churro. Certainly not the best churro you're gonna find anywhere in the world. And that's that. 14,830 yen later. Wow, where do you even begin? You already know the number one best thing we ate today was... Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the man gave me the finger, so I had to turn it around and then tell him that I noticed, you dig? The award for best food at the European Christmas market here in Tokyo easily goes to that Swiss raclette macaroni and cheese. That was certified capital D delicious. I would get that again and again and again. We had a lot of other tasty foods here and we had some not so good foods. Um, hopefully you've used the knowledge in this video so you can pick out a few dishes you wanna try when you come here. But remember, when you come to a Christmas market like this, sure you're coming for the food, but you're coming for the vibes. You're probably gonna come here with your friends, have a couple beers, have a good time, make some memories. If you had kids, they would probably go nuts in this place, love to see all the lights too. This was well worth it. I'm so glad I didn't listen to the people on Reddit. You should not listen to the people on Reddit. Maybe you should listen to this guy here on YouTube right here. But I would come back to this market again and again and again. Loved it. Everyone was so, so nice. Major shout out to all the nice people we met. Major shout out to all the hardworking vendors cooking all these foods for, I don't know, I think this market runs for like a month or something. My name's Brent Tim from the Tokyo Christmas Market 2023, and I'm saying ciao for now.